Today we are in a little suburb outside of Pittsburgh, checking out the world's largest monsters collection. It's a private collection here. I've been living in Pittsburgh pretty much all my life. Well, except for the past 10 years, whenever I moved away, then met this one and moved down to Florida. But the entire time that I was living here, I had no idea that this even existed. I read about it in a newspaper years ago, reached out to Butch Patrick, and he got us in touch with the owner of this private Munsters collection. We're excited. Pittsburgh is a very unique place, and you know what, quite honestly, it makes sense that a Munsters collection would be here in this neighborhood. From what we gather, this collection is a legend, so to speak. It's massive. People have heard about it. Not many people have seen it. So we're one of the few lucky people. The collection that we're going to show you, please keep in mind that it is only one room. There are multiple rooms. There are multiple buildings. But we're just going to show you a small snippet of it and you'll never believe where it's at. Pittsburgh is filled with all kinds of museums, but this is pretty much off the beaten path, as off the beaten path as you can get. I've been living in Pittsburgh for years. I'm talking years, and I had no idea that something like this existed. And we were lucky enough to be invited down to check out this room, which just houses just a small fraction of this private Munsters collection. What'd you find, Jessica? I found the outfit from Grandpa. From Grandpa Munster, his outfit, his cape? Yeah. Well, everything, actually. His waist jacket, his vest, his shirt. I That's awesome. I saw uh, a name written on there, but I'm not sure. I don't want to, you know, touch it too much. That's so cool. And what's over here? Probably everyone, well, maybe one of my favorites, Lily Munster. This is her gown. I don't know if this is a replica or an original. I'll lift it that up. Is. Let's see the bottom. It is stunning. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's the bat necklace. It's a very small, cramped area down here, but this collection of Munster's memorabilia, there's a lot of it. Even things that I wouldn't even imagine would exist, they are here. And some of them, there's multiples. I mean, multiples. It's beautiful. One of the things that really catches my eye just walking in here is this autographed picture of Zombo, probably one of my favorite characters from the Munsters. There are a few display cases filled I'm going to call them little monster knickknacks from bobbleheads to cards to little books, plates, pins, buttons, you name it, it is here. Oh, this is like Munster's dream right now. Look at that one. Munster's Theater. It was five cents when it came out. Oh, wow. Genuine photographs. That's cool. Amazing. Over in this display case, they have some boxes of different things, but check out those Munster Pez. Little figurines, patches. Very neat, very neat. Little things from Universal City right there. Oh my. I'm not sure what some of this is, but I'm gonna say I want it. Oh, I remember those little games like that where they're like little puzzle pieces and you'd move mm -hmm. them. That's very cool. Oh wow. It's a little model of Dragula. It's easy to get obsessed with memorabilia and to get excited for things to collect. And one of the things that I got really excited because it's something that I've been wanting to find um, when I go out and about is themed slot machines. I'm not a gambler, but I like the themed machines. They're fun to play. And you just, you don't find them anymore. He has two. 
This is one of them. It's amazing. And then the other one. Spend all coins. Spend all coins. Spend all coins. Spend all coins. And then the well, other bet, one bet, that they bet, have bet, bet. is right over here, right next to it. A little harder to see. But this is your old style slot machine where normally you would have pulled an arm and it rolls down and you have to match to get a payout. And there's our... Fred Gwynn. Yeah. Herman Munster. I wonder if they have other characters on it. That bat is cool. I would think so. I would. I really would imagine that they do. Very cool, right? Very cool. Oh, they show them up here, actually. They show... So it's the Munsters. I know that's very hard to see. Bats. So just him as a character. I love the font of is the numbers. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You imagine that from the original cast, there's all sorts of things you can find to collect, but I had no idea they even made dolls. A zombo this doll. Character. A zombo doll. His little hat. A little wizard hat. Look at that face. I feel like I want to be zombo for Halloween one year. Ooh. There's a few monster puzzles here, and right above it, Pretty much every single Munsters game that was ever made, this collector owns them all. I kind of want to play that one right there, the Munsters card game. I really love the art. It's one of the things that I think we love the most about the Munsters. I don't know. I'm really interested in these board games. You have the Munsters picnic game. You have the Munsters drag race game. You have Touch of Velvet. Um, there's another one I saw. Target games, jigsaw puzzle games, just a rub makes a color picture rub on games, card games. How, do you do you guys know that I'm obsessed with board games? Like this is this is mecca. This shelf looks like it's pretty much all different hand puppets. Right there in the center of the screen, those are puppets of all the characters. But then up towards the top, there's a shelf of Herman Munster. And then there are Herman Munster hand puppets in boxes. This is crazy. And right next to it, Fred Gwynn was also in Car 54. These little figurines, these are pretty awesome. I think they're bobbleheads. Amongst all the costumes here, not really sure again which ones are original, but I think this one actually is. Inside the jacket is stamped for Butch Patrick. Like it's his, it's his original jacket and pants. Jacket and shorts, his iconic it, shorts. If I can get it to focus, there we go. That's crazy cool. Got some artwork down here on the bottom. But this would be any kid's dream, I'm guessing, back in the 60s when the Munsters was airing. Who? All right, so if you have a lunchbox, you have to have a thermos that goes with it. And there are no shortages of lunchboxes here or thermoses. So that is incredible. And right above it, got all kinds of different model cars of the Dragula, the Coach. Some in the boxes, some not. But look at them all. I mean, this guy is a serious serious collector it's impressive obviously we're not going to be able to show you everything we're just kind of walking through and pointing out some of the things that really stand out i mean we want them all everything here is just insanely gorgeous in a monsters sort of way look at these guys here these little porcelain figures there's grandpa monster and herman over there with some smaller ones too we asked our host if he could point out 10 things that are in his collection that he finds or thinks that are extremely rare and that he can't believe that he has them. He pretty much said out of all the toys that he has, it's pretty darn easy to collect toys and figurines. But one of the very hardest things to get your hands on, especially unopened, are things like this, paint by number sets. He has quite a few of them. There's some back there that are untouched, unopened. Paint a plaque, different things that kids can do that they would either open, use, and would get thrown away. One of the things that caught my eye was something hidden deep into a corner. And it took me a second to realize what it was. And it was on his list of rarities because again, an unopened item that would have just gotten open, torn up and thrown away. Take a look. It is a Munster's 
kite, and it says, as kites disappear in the sky, only Herman can be seen. And this one is unopened, it looks. Naturally preserved. He also pointed out this piece of Munster's jewelry, which is this bolo tie with the Munsters and the family right there. Another thing that he was absolutely adamant about on his list of rarities is this. It's a hypo squirt. Basically, it's a toy hypodermic needle. And here's the one still in its original package, which is extremely rare. Here's a full-size mannequin of Grandpa Munster in his laboratory coat. And check it out. He's wearing a Munster's hat. Aside from Zombo, I think one of my favorite pieces in this collection is that right there in that framed glass. It says Herman's Happy Valley. It is one of the title cards from one of the shows. Right in the center of this shelf are molds for Herman Munster's forehead. But over here on the left hand side, that wig for Grandpa Munster. And this one over here for Eddie Munster are actually from Munster's Go Home. He also has a collection of Ben Cooper masks in boxes looking immaculate. And masks and heads galore. Just look at the detail of these. This is pretty darn amazing. This is all of the signatures from the Munster family reunion back in 1996. You got tickets. That's crazy, that's crazy. And down here, it's a framed picture of Herman and Grandpa, and it's a postcard signed by Fred Gwynn. Some of the titles on the cans are a walk on the mild side. Munster's Pike's Peak, Herman the Great, Family Portrait, Herman's Rival. This is just, it's, it's amazing. Eddie's nickname. Oh. Don't Check this out. Herman, I remember that one. Listen, the Munsters number 18. If a Martian answers, hang up. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Petty's nickname. Bats of a feather. There's more down here, too. What caught my eye was these two. Happy 100th anniversary. There's even more down here on this shelf. And the ones here on the end, Munsters go home, real one and real two. That's... Amazing. In Technicolor. In Technicolor. It's not exactly monsters, but it is a vampire. It's Talking Dracula. Do not open until sundown, but check that out. It's it's a talking vampire still in its coffin. Like the 50s, the 60s. That's amazing. And to sleep he goes. Another rare piece in his collection is this monster Nix says adorable look at the packaging he said that it is very rare to find it still on the card well here it is it also has a mannequin over here of uncle gilbert kind of hiding off in the corner and look he is wearing his vacation hat also hidden away behind these doors are different magazines and books and rare pictures autographs things that just really couldn't be out on display And the organization of all this, look at this, what does it say? Sheet music, size magazines, lobby cards, Munsters items, toy catalogs, old car books. This is just one closet. There are more. And keep in mind, this is all just one room. This is a cardboard cutout signed by Eddie Munster and Pat Priest. Never seen that before. I like the artwork. And here are Munster bobbleheads. Still and the wrappers. Jessica, did you see this jar over here that says bat milk yogurt? It's like our kitchen. It is, yes. With little Cupid dolls, is that what you call those? I don't know. They are creepy. I think those were called Cupid dolls. Cupid dolls. And right above it, there's Grandpa ah, looking a little mysterious, a little mischievous outside of his box. It's Herman. Lily. I was going to say that one's empty, but fell down. I think it's Grandpa in there. Well, there's Grandpa right there. And here is a costume for Fred Gwynn's character, Herman Munster. It's massive. I could wear it like a dress. Yeah, you could wear it like a dress. And inside this one cabinet, there are all kinds of little trinkets. Tiny, tiny little Munster's memorabilia. Man. 
Oh, there's Zombo again. Zombo Fan Club. Check out these buttons. Holy crap. And it just goes and goes and goes. We'd like to give a shout out to Butch Patrick, the original Eddie Munster, pretty much the only Eddie Munster. He's the one who got us in touch with the owner of this private collection, the largest in the entire world, largest private collection. And I believe it. It's phenomenal. What do you think, it's, Jessica? It's beyond words and it can't even be contained in one room or one storage unit. No. It's this is only one room that we're showing you. There I'm are I'm others. I'm I'm this yeah. This has been quite an honor. It really has. It's been quite an honor. I feel actually pretty darn cool. Like, I don't want to leave. I want to take it all home with me. If you could take home one thing, one thing oh. out of this entire collection that we have seen, more than just oh. what we're showing you, but if you could take home one thing, what would it be? I would probably take home something like one of the original episode film containers, um, especially if it was signed by the cast or uh, something like that, because it, that would, it, would have, it would become a big piece of my personal collection. I would really want to showcase it. So something small, I, I think I would pass on. Even it, even despite the rarity, I think I want a, a, a big piece because I would have to just bam right in the middle of the wall. Yeah. I know what I would take. What? Of course I want everything here because it's monsters, but I'm kind of obsessing over Zombo's character, this signed picture of him. I can see that in a small frame, a small memento on our wall. Wherever I come,